Hello. The message of enthronement we are about to watch is a message preached by my amiable wife, Pastor Mrs. Former AZ. You know the word of God says day unto day, utter a speech and night after night revealeth knowledge. The entrance of God's word give a light and a supply of understanding to the simple. I believe as you view and as you watch, the word of God will penetrate your heart and give you inheritance among the sanctified. Please stay tuned, watch from your heart, and one word anointed by God will change your life forever. Happy viewing. Detone your enemies, chapter 4 and verse 14. Let's read together, everybody, please. If you are seated, I'd like to kindly appeal to you to stand. Amen. He says, Thou shalt keep therefore his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee this day, that he may go well with thee and with thy children after thee, and that thou mayest prolong thy days upon the earth, which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Forever. First Corinthians 14 and verse 40. First Corinthians 14 and verse 40. That is something about 40 this morning. Praise the Lord. Show me First Corinthians 40, 40, 40, 40. Everybody want to go. He says, Let all things be done decently. I have a head and in order. Shout hallelujah to them. This morning we're going to be looking at the subject. 12 commandments for Zion church workers. The 12 commandments for Zion church workers. Praise the Lord. So this morning we're going to be looking at the subject, the commandments or the 12 commandments for Zion church workers. I'd like us to understand that every covenant inheritance in the kingdom is accessed and enjoyed by commandment. Every covenant inheritance in God's kingdom is assessed and is enjoyed by commandment. Commandments and order is the first law in the school of supernatural increase and multiplication. Commandment and order is the first law in the school of the supernatural increase and multiplication. What does that connote? God cannot bring increase, multiplication, enlargement in the system where there are no commandments or where there are no order. So commandments and order are the requisite things that God lays on ground before he pours out the spirit of multiplications and growth. Now, I want to define what is a commandment. A commandment is a set of rules. A commandment is a set of rules. A commandment is a set of rules. A body of regulations. A commandment is a set of rules. A body of regulations that governs the operation of a system that governs the operation of a system or a commission I'll take it again a commandment is a set of rules or body of regulations that governs the operations of a system or a commission if you got that shot, amen. There can be no monumental development or growth or impact to any system without commandment. There can be no monumental growth or usual acceleration if there are no commandments and if there is no order. Any system where everybody behaves the way he wants, everybody, you know, carries out the instruction the way it suits him. Is an organization that can never be a force of the earth. The first thing that God did in Genesis 1 was to bring order. The first thing Jesus did as he hit the earth before he manifested ministry was to raise a team of people and chart the course of order. 
one of the things that Paul did across all the churches he planted was to insist on decency and order. Now, we are going to go straight, but before that, I will even want to define who is a worker. Who is a worker in the Bible? A church worker is somebody that has been born again, you are born again, you have gone through your foundation school, or you are still going through your foundation school, and you have identified a department, you are a worker. I say it again, a church worker is somebody that is born again, you must be born again, number one. You are either, you see, either you have completed your foundation school, or you are going through a foundation school, and then you are subscribing to be a part of a functional department, wholesale and fellowship. Now we're going to be looking at the 12 commandments for this morning. For the purpose of my teaching this morning, I'm going to be taking six commandments in the first service and in the second service, I will take the remaining six. Can I hear you shout hallelujah? Commandment number one. Commandment number one. A church worker must not travel without duly informing and seeking the consent of his master. A church worker must not travel without duly informing or seeking the consent of his master. It is an error for a trained church worker to wake up in the morning despite how emergency or how present the thing is and you just travel that way, no way. For you to be a church worker, you need to understand that you are now part of the system. You are no longer working for us, you are working with us for the entirety or for the corporate achievement of the vision that God has given to us. You don't know yourself anymore. You don't just wake up in the morning and take decisions. No. Number one thing you must have to do as a church worker is that you must be able to relate with your superior. It could be the next line of authority above the structure. Say that FM, SM, excuse me, sir. An emergency came up. I am not being service today. Please let the appropriate quarters know. That is how to do it. You don't just wake up in the morning and travel because if you do that, it, I'm going to show you three things that it represents. So a church worker must not travel without duly informing the next line of authority that is above him. I've seen a lot of people who do such travel, they are yet to return. We are running a covenant, we are running a commission. If you say you have signed in to be a church worker on a conference ground such as this, it simply means you are tapping on the potentials and the virtues of that commission to begin to guide you and to protect you. Can I hear you shout, amen? Now let me show you three things that you are making us to believe. Anytime you travel without permission, anytime you travel without permission, three things are involved. Number one, you are saying you are not under anybody. You are saying you are not under anybody. That is number one thing it represents. Anytime you wake up and travel, it simply means you are saying you are not. Many a times I, I teach people, Satan hates men who wants to operate authority, who are not under authority. If Satan finds you, he will devour you. Most times when we say in the name of Jesus, is because Satan knows that we are hiding under the authority. You know, most people want to command authority, but they are not under what authority. If Satan finds you as someone who is commanding authority and you are not hiding under the sort of authority, he will tear you apart. That's why a lot of people who have said that ask the source of giver. So each time you travel without the blessings of the next level of authority, it simply means you are saying, I owe myself, I, I, I can do anything I want, my child does not matter, they can go to hell anytime they see me. No, 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 that is the worst way to live. Secondly, you are operating aside of higher grades and government covering. You are operating aside of higher grades and covenant covering. You don't know what it means for. Uh, that I am going to look for that, keep me in your prayers. And your father said, may the God of Zion go with you. You don't know how powerful those utterances are. 
These are the reasons why a lot of people die prematurely, a lot of people expose themselves to dangers because they are living in rebellion. What else are you suggesting when you are not taking authority or permission? You are planting a very bad seed whose harvest you will not like in the future. Every act is a seed. And according to Genesis 8.22, Every harvest is bigger than the sea. So that's law number one. Don't just wake up, you know for yourself, you are under authority. Somebody is undergirding you. Somebody is overseeing you. You are in a spiritual family. Before you do anything, please make sure you have gotten clearance from the necessary orders before you do things. That's number one. Commandment number two. A church worker must not dress anyhow, irrespective of your sex, male or female. A church worker must not dress anyhow, irrespective of your sex, male or female. We commonly say in the marketing parlance that you are addressed the way you dress. Your dressing reveals the spirit that inhabits you. If you see a young girl who's always very skipping things and revealing all her cleavages, it's a sign that is a spirit that is growing in her. And if immediate deliverance is not conducted on her, she eventually becomes that which is displayed. If you see a man that shows his hands and wears a, a trouser that is tapas, that doesn't meet ground, how can a man be wearing trousers and it's not coming the top of his shoe? And it's going like this, like taking it, it's a sign that something is about entering him. And that is your number to pick it. Because I saw some of them in this church today. That's the correct style I see. A young boy will be a closer. Because of me, I came up in like this. I'm doing like this. Typically, our ideal dress on the Sunday morning is corporate. Some of the corporate. A church worker, please begin to buy ties, begin to get suits. I want to raise a corporate society. Yes, uh, enough of this. Yes, that's my design. In the next two, three years, we are going to get that. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. I want if a stranger walks into this place to look as if we are doing an ESCO meeting. ESCO what? The least is a man wearing white shirt, red tie with that suit. That is what? The least. So begin to work on that. I know we are not yet there, but we will soon get to that point. Did you hear what I said? From the wire to the leadership to everyone, you see corporate. That's one of my son. He didn't know I took notice of him this year. He's dressing entirely shifted level. I've been wondering. Each morning I look at him and say, ah, this my son is catching one. Teaching good though. He's still teaching. He good. By the time we start bringing the result, he go over bring the result. If he's even in the church, he's looking at me. But he, didn't, he doesn't know that he's the one I'm talking about. Dressing shifted. I pray by next Sunday when your dressing shift levels. People will address you the way you dress. If you're a church worker, you must dress decently. Imagine an ushering person that is wearing a mini skate and is and duty demands that you should bend down and put money here. Is it not talking between two decisions, either to bend down or not to bend down, or to delegate the duty to somebody? Hello? Two things will either happen. If she bends down, there's probably the possibility of the thing tearing before us. If you're hearing what I'm saying, shout amen. amen. Commandment number three. A church worker must maintain a good behavior. A church worker must maintain a good behavior and positive lifestyle within and outside the church. Show me 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 2. Don't be a negative ambassador of the church through your character and behavior. You must be a good ambassador. You must be a good ambassador of the church. You must be able to represent the ideals of the church, the philosophy of the church, the visions of the church. When people would see you, they should be able to know without meeting me, what Zion Heritage is all about, your utterance, 
your behavioral pattern, your disposition, your attitude, your conduct, your carriage, the way you speak, the way you do things, must all be reflecting on the fact that you are from where? From Zion. Show me that scripture. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 2. The Bible says, Yea, I want our epistle written what in our hearts, known and read of all. As you are now, people know you are the seed of Zion. And to a certain degree, they've been able to know the kind of life that Bishop lives. So people will always mirror to see you or to see the commission through you, your character, your behavior, your submission to authority. How you run with the instructions from the pulpit. These are some of the things that people are on the water for if they, must, if they must align and be a part of what they are saying. Don't preach a message you don't have life to back. Don't ever do that. One of the things that I have in life is integrity and consistency. For more than 17 years, I've been preaching one thing and I've been doing one thing. You can never, you can never, you can never fault me in character of dignity. You cannot, even if you live with big hands, you cannot. What we do here, we're not pretending about it. We are, we are sure that we know God. We are sure that we're born again. And we're not doing it for any materialism or for somebody that follows. We are doing it because we love Jesus. You know, there are some people that can act very well. If they act, if they go around people, act and act and act, they will do all the things that we want you to know. But right inside their heart, their heart is far from what they are believing. And that is a scattered arrangement. That's what? So the that is a misnomer. Praise the Lord. So a church program must maintain a good behavior and positive lifestyle within and outside the church. People know you are ten sided in your neighborhood. And many a times they want to know what kind of church is this person exposing himself or herself to. Can I see the kind of life of Christ through him or her? The easiest way to win souls for, for, for God is to maintain a character that reveals Jesus. Can I have a shout amen to that? So let us learn how to walk with God in purity. Proverbs 11, I think verse 2. He said that the integrity of the righteous man shall do what? Preserve him. Integrity is what? A preserver. Don't borrow money from church members. Fake bank news and say, and say hey, my mother is sick in the village. And you go and borrow money from 21 members of the church. You are the problem of our church. So it's important you know that your character and your behavior must be in sync with what we teach. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Number four. A church worker must not speak evil against his pastor. A church pastor must not speak evil against his pastor, wife, or the church leadership. Why you must not do this is because being a church worker automatically makes you a part of the system. Being a church worker automatically makes you what? A part of the system. It would be an, an error to criticize a system that you are part of. Learn to celebrate your pastor and the doings of God in the midst of Zion. Never ever be in the bad books of your pastor because it will not profit you. Celebrate your pastor, honor your pastor. There is a place. Like many a times, each time I teach along this line, I always want to make a, a distinction between hero worshiping and celebration. Between what? Now, honoring your pastor is to recognize the hand of God upon his life and celebrate him. Then, hero worshiping is worshiping your God as uh, worshiping your pastor as if he is one, as if he is God. Is there any distinction between two of them? So, when you honor your pastor. You are celebrating the hand of God. And honor is always the seed for assets. Honor is the seed for assets. Any light you want to. Most of this generation of young people, they don't know how to know. They don't, they don't do honor. They don't do honor. They don't honor the bare presence of honorable people. People that God has put in a seat. Familiarity has killed hunger. And that is why their life cannot get better. 
You are in the presence of somebody that God has gone on. And you are just, you are just taking them this experience as a, 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 a usual experience. There are pastors, elders in the faith. When I go to them, I knew that to come to them. They are not my spiritual father. But because of honor, because of respect, because of what I'm looking for. The worst thing that will happen to somebody is for you to grow, grow in familiarity with your pastor. You know, it, that, that honor, that, that glory is no longer there. You talk to him as if it's your colleague or you are helping him out to do the work of ministry. You are down. You are, you are gone. He can tell you the truth. Now the question is, are your pastors perfect? No, sir. Can they do mistakes? Yes, they can do mistakes. But in the midst of that mistake, there is still an anointing upon their life that God has placed upon them for your blessing. You too, you are not perfect. I used to tell people, if the church we are, we are to be perfect, the day you join the church, the church became what? Imperfect. Because you came with your packages into the church and the whole thing was corrupted. So I hear you. Praise the Lord. So a church worker was not speak evil. From time to time, go on, on Facebook, write about him. Tell the world you are privileged to have somebody that led you to Christ. Raise a prayer. Even if you don't so see it, send him some good with Papa. Ah, you bless God on Sunday. May God keep you for us. I, 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 it also be seen. Even if it is seen, there is no problem to it. But it must not be seen. Good words of affirmation. Words of affirmation to your pastor. That people went to read, you can't even send an SMS, and you don't even behave as if you are passed up by somebody. As if you don't have a relationship with, your, uh, uh, with somebody, it's an error. So make sure that you don't speak evil. Commandment number five a church worker must not default in his financial obligation to God. A church worker must not default. In the area of his financial obligation to God, especially in the area of tithing, command, in the area of first fruit, the area of sacrifice, and in the area of seed sowing. A church worker must not default in his financial obligation to God. Especially in the area of his tithing, secondly, in the area of his first fruit, thirdly, in the area of his sacrifice, and in the area of his seed sowing. Every church worker must be a financial stakeholder. You must be able to bring in your resources for the advancement of the kingdom cause. Do not eat at Jephnik and you go and play at Mama, Mama Kaz. Please, your altar becomes your principal place where you send in your first fruit, where you send in your fight, where you send in your partnership commitment and all manner of giving. Beyond you being blessed, your giving too is a seed of preservation in the days of emergency. The altar you sow to, that means the altar that alters things in your life. Can I hear you shout? Amen. I want us to look at the reasons why every church worker must pay tithes to their church. Right. Reasons why every church worker, I'm going to run through it. Reasons why every church worker must pay tithes to his church. Number one, if you are not a tither, the angel of your commission does not recognize you. If you are not a tighter, the angel of your commission does not recognize you. If you are not a tighter, the angel of your church does not recognize you. If you do not tight, the angel of that commission does not recognize you. You are on your own. Did you get my point? Number two. If you are not a tighter, the altar of your commission will not fight for you. Every altar has horns. And that horns is for defense and for offense. For defense in terms of 
attack and for offense in terms of hostility. So you must be able to know that if you are in a mandated mantle church, the altar has several horns, and those several horns is for your defense or for your what? Protection. Shout amen. Number three, if you are not a tighter, you are hindering the advancement of God's work. The gospel is free, but the means of communicating the gospel is highly capital intensive. For example, this has been bought, a lot of repairs, you cannot have good sound. We have invested too much money in sound. We are going over to the ACs, we are going over to the lightning, the, the, the interior decor, you know, church staff have been paid and all that. There is no way we can do all those things if there is no inflow. Titan is not church, it's not pastor's money. Titan is used for the day-to-day -day running of the church operation. Can I hear you shout amen? Every time the every time the gas there is burning, it is the tithe that is what burning. Anytime they repair the buses, is the tithe that is what. All the new samples we put is the what tithe. Nobody eats your tithe. Tithe is used for the day-to-day -day running of the church. Can I hear a shout? Amen. I teach my pastors. I said, as you be very senior pastor. When people give you something, you must be able to know whether they give to the church or they give to you. Any check that comes with your name is your what? Is your own. But anyone that comes in the name of Zen Heritage, of course, you have to know that Zen Heritage has become a legal entity. Some say a legal entity. So you must know. So anything that comes here, we use to run those things. There are young boys we are working every Tuesday to Friday making sure that the media is running on the so those guys are giving stipends just to make sure that they do their work and all that so we need all the money to be able to do that shout amen, amen. if you are not a tighter you are provoking a negative climate if you are not a tighter you are provoking a negative climate of financial hardship right if you are not a tighter, you are provoking a negative climate of financial hardship. I want you to get this point, it's very, very key. If you are not a tighter, you are provoking a negative climate of financial hardship and struggling on you and on those around you. If you are not a tighter, you are provoking a negative climate of financial hardship and struggling on you and on those around you. If you don't pay tight, you are creating an atmosphere of financial hardship. That is why it is not good for a worker not to be a tighter. You are bringing an atmosphere over those under you. You are bringing an atmosphere over those you lead. You, you can be able to make those people under you not to prosper because by the law of first principle, you are not doing what is needful. If you have me, shout amen. If you have me, shout hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So every leader must pay tight in order to maintain a financial open heaven, not only for you, but for those who are under you. Can I hear you shout amen? amen? Number five, if you are not a tighter, you are indirectly telling God that you are not part of the covenant of the house. We have the 12 pillar covenant of the house, which I normally teach every year. All those 12 covenants are activated anytime you pay your tithe. If you refuse to pay your tithe, you are simply telling God, Lord, I want this anointing. I love being part of this family, but I don't want to be a part of the covenant or the things that you have made provisions for. And by so doing, you use your hand to cut off yourself from the deeds of God in this condition. Can I hear you shout, Amen? Number seven, still under Mrs. Well Workers must pay tight. If you are not a tighter, you become a bad influence to those that look up to you. If you are not a tighter, you become what? 
a bad influence on unto those that do what and do unto you. Number six, another church commandment. A church worker must not get angry or rebel when he or she is corrected or reprimanded. A church worker must not get angry or rebel when he or she is corrected or reprimanded. If you consider your pastor your father, he must have right to correct you. He must have right to bring you your head under the rod. Thy rod and thy staff, both of them they do what? So don't like the staff and hate the rod. A shepherd must have both what? The rod and the staff. Some people love the staff. Like when I say, uh, your, car, your, your car will deliver 24, 24, amen. Why do we call you tomorrow morning? Hey, then pastor, rise and shoot. And when I bring hard work, everyone, everyone will go cold. Hey, two of them should must go down. Yeah. If you are in a shot, hallelujah. So a church worker must not be angry. If you consider the mind of father, there is nothing he tells you that gets you to misbehave. And if you know that is your father, he will tell you with a heart of love. To the intent you make the necessary what adjustment and your life gets better. Every person will like the lives of his members to get better, isn't it? And look at me, if I'm pastoring you, I'm not after much your life is not getting better. I will call you to my office and ask you some pertinent questions. Your life must go on a progressive on a progressive scale of life. It must be changing, it must be evolving. If the world we preach is potent, there must be an accelerated advancement of every side. Can I have a shout, amen? Yet we are not going to have no promotion, no lifting, even for it to change your clothes. Something is wrong with it. We need to invite you to the office and find out any way we can have it. So, your pastor reserves the right to talk to you, and when he does that, please don't get angry or rebel when he or she or when you are what corrected or what reprimanded. I believe you've been blessed by that word of enthronement that came your way. Suddenly in my heart, I believe that your life will never be the same again. In case you are out there, you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, quickly I would like you to chant this prayer. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, Dear Lord Jesus, I come to you, I come to you, a sinner, a sinner, I confess, I confess, from today, from today, I receive you, I receive into you, into my life, into my life, as my Lord, as my Lord, my personal Savior, my personal Savior, never to sin again, never to sin again. Congratulations, Amen. You are now sanctified, blood bought, and anointed for exploit. Amen. I want to speak specially to those who listen to the word of God. I declare by the mercies of God yes. that every yoke of limitation in your life is broken. Amen. I speak that the land where you are will not deny you your treasure. Amen. I declare when it is your time to be blessed, it will not be negotiated. Amen. I decree by the mystery of the word of God, yes. may you have access to divine inheritance. Amen. I declare healing to your body. Amen. I declare fruitfulness to everybody's situation. Amen. Receive grace for financial empowerment. Amen. Go and excel. Amen. Subdue the land. Amen. Manifest dominion. Amen. In the name of the Father. Amen. And of the Son. Amen. Amen. Thank you for watching the message of Enthronement. And I believe that miracles are already happening in your life right Hallelujah. now. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you to follow us on Facebook and on other social platforms. You can see the links scrolling on your screen right now. And the headquarters of the church is located at Zion Heritage and Miracle Ministries of Voice of Nigeria Way, Lugwe Airport Road, Abuja. And we have uh, so many other branches. The branches and their addresses will also be scrolling on your screens right now. So stay connected with us and remain lifted for life.